What's up, tennis fans? I'm Lauren Lynch, and this is Tennis Now, your source for the latest tennis news now. Marty Fish climbed out of a sick bed in fighting back from a two-set deficit for the first time in his career. While a fired-up Fish climbed off the canvas for a five-set win, a listless Sam Query saw his Australian Open dreams put to a rest in the first round. Fish, who was suffering from an energy-sapping illness, he believes maybe Mono stormed back for a 2-6-4-6-6-3-7-5-6-3 victory over Victor Hanescu in the Australian Open first round. Fish said, I've had a long career and to not be able to come back from two sets to love down is something that I thought about certainly. It's something that is pretty special and being able to put in the work to get the fitness level and basically change my life, I was able to do it. It was a mixed Melbourne day for American men as Fish's former Boca Raton roommate Andy Roddick routed Jan Hajik 6-1, 6-2, 6-2, but young Americans Query and Ryan Harrison both fell at the first hurdle. Adrian Monarino made quick work of Harrison 6-4, 6-3, 6-4 in one hour, 43 minutes. Lukasz Kobot cracked 75 winners in conquering a conservative query 5762366186. The 18th seeded query was the first men's seed to fall. It was query's third consecutive opening round at Oz Open Exit, and marking the 10th time query has failed to survive the first round of a major tournament. Roddick said of query, I think we all know Sam's better than losing the first round. It was a rough day today, but he'll rebound. Fish's physical rebound propels him into a second round match with Spain's Tommy Robredo in their only prior Grand Slam meeting. Robredo rallied for a five set win. Fish concedes he has been under the weather, down under, but is he's feeling a whole lot better after his inspiring comeback. Fish said, I haven't felt well for the past week or so. I've been in bed every day but a first round match was something that I probably didn't think I was going to be able to do. It feels really good. The new year has signaled a new look for Maria Sharapova. The former world number one showed up in Australia with a new rock on her finger and a new head racket in her hand and a new coach by her side. But Sharapova had to encounter the same old service issues in overcoming a 10 double fault to dispense Tamarine Tanasugarn 6163. An opening round casualty last year in a surprising upset loss to Maria Kirilenko, Sharapova scored her first Oz Open win since she beat Anna Ivanovich to collect the 2008 title. Sharapova said, I was definitely a little bit nervous in the beginning. You know, last year I played first match on center and you know, I lost. So kind of was like, I don't want this to happen again this year. The first game definitely wasn't great and I didn't serve good at all during the match. The recently gauged Sharapova experienced a professional breakup last week, parting company with coach Michael Joyce and announcing that she will be working exclusively with coach Thomas Hogstead. Sharapova called her split with Joyce a break, but spoke like a woman hoping to start a new chapter in her career. We worked for six years together, Sharapova said of Joyce. After a really long period of time, I think a few things become routine. I think from both of our perspectives, it was a really good move to bring in a new voice, a fresh perspective into the team. He was within that transition. We all talked about it as a team. Michael is like a brother to me. We talk all the time. Obviously, it's different not having him at the tournament after so many years. Yeah, I mean, it's part of an athlete's career. Playing her first tournament match in six months, Justine Hennen survived a barrage of ballistic forehands from 145th ranked Sania Marizia to score a 5-7-6-3-6-1 victory. It was Hennen's first match since she suffered a season-ending right elbow injury in a Wimbledon fourth round loss to rival Kim Kleisters. Mirza held a 40-15 lead to serve two all in the second set, but Hennen stormed back to win 10 of the last 12 games to set up a second round meeting with Britain's Elena Baltacha. Hennen said, tonight it wasn't easy. I wasn't playing at my best tennis and she was doing a lot of winners, a lot of mistakes, and that wasn't very easy to find a rhythm. You have to remain calm. That's what I did, so I'm pleased about that. The seven-time Grand Slam champion has reached the Australian Open final in three of her last four appearances in Melbourne. 
Now she's one win removed from potential third round clash with two-time Grand Slam champion Svetlana Kuznetsova. The number 11 seed was runner-up to Serena Williams in last year's final with Serena out of the tournament this year. Can Justine contend for the title again? She said, I think I need this kind of match exactly to be really into the tournament like I want to be and to be at my best level. I know it can go very quickly at this level. Of course, I have the experience, but I need matches, I need rhythm, and I need fight, like tonight. And I remain confident, not really about the tournament, but about the future. Novak Djokovic helped lead Serbia into its first Davis Cup championship in Belgrade last month. And the buzz from that monumental moment continues to inspire Djokovic in Melbourne. The 2008 champion swept Marcel Grenoyer's 6-1-6-3-6-1 in commanding first round win and said Serbia's Davis Cup conquest continues to be a source of strength for him. Djokovic had this to say about winning the last Davis Cup. It was a big confidence boost for me. I've had these experiences that I'm trying to use in the big events. I know how it is to play in the big stage. I just keep going towards my goal. I'm motivated. As long as it's like that, I will keep playing on the high level. Australian Open officials have announced stricter security for this year's event. In recent years, Serbia and Croatian fans have clashed on the tournament grounds, including one frightening chair-throwing incident among fans. Djokovic plays Croatia's Ivan Dodig next and says that he hopes the latest installment of the Serbia-Croatia rivalry will be contested under peaceful conditions. Talking about fan violence, Djokovic said, I just hope that it's not going to happen. It's a very bad image that they send for their countries, you know. We don't support that at all. We're very good friends actually off the court. All of us Serbian and Croatian players. There's no reason to create any kind of bad feeling about our countries. We did have problems in the past, but that doesn't concern us. We are athletes. We are friends off the court. You're never going to see a problem between us. Hopefully nothing will happen. Well, that wraps us up for today, tennis fans, and Australian Open Day 1. Please subscribe to the Tennis Now YouTube channel. We will be giving you updates daily of the Australian Open and all the rest of the tennis news. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter for the rest. I'm Lauren Lynch, and this is Tennis Now. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.